In the final interview of our women's series, we have the pleasure to welcome in our studios former First Lady and politician Naila Ma'awad. Since 1994, Mrs. Ma'awad has served as president of the Center for Research and Education on Democracy. As a member of the National Assembly from 1991 till 2009, she has also served on numerous parliamentary committees specializing in such diverse fields as finance, children's rights, and education. She also founded the Renee Ma'awad Foundation, which she named after her late husband and president. The foundation's aim was to ameliorate social justice and economic development in Lebanon and the Arab world. Welcome, Mrs. Ma'awad. So, how are you first? I'm good, and how are you? Uh, at the eve of uh, the 8th of March, yes, which is uh, the, uh, the world wide International uh, Women's Inter Day. Yes, I want to congratulate all women in the world. And of course, when a woman is good, the people are good because it's essential to have women all over in any sector in the world. Well, you played a very important role 18 years in parliament. And three years, I want to add also, Minister of Social uh, Affairs. Affairs as well. Out in those 18 years, what experience stands out? Well, first of all, uh, I'm surprised that you don't ask me, you know, of course, you did not go uh, in, par you didn't join parliament as a woman, but you joined as a wife. I want to come that to that <laughs> later. Right. I want to talk about the most okay. important role. Well, I think uh, that first of all, when I joined parliament, I had to redo a whole education. And it was essential for me to learn more about uh, legislations, to know more about parliamentary life, to, to study economics, not to study economics, but to have people helping me in economics, in the constitution, in everything. So I felt like a child going back to school at the first pre grade of preschool. But I think it was a very fascinating experience. Of course, I had the privilege to be uh, representing women during one year and a half I was alone in Parliament after having been not the first woman but the second. Mirna Bustani was uh, the first one. And um, uh, I think uh, I have been able to do some uh, or to amend some uh, legislations I'm very proud of. In the 18 years that you were a member of parliament from the 1991 till 2009 things must have evolved for women of course can you speak can you can you think of one specific change that well happened first while of you all in 92 there were the f there was the first world world summit in rio de janeiro of course the big title was keeping the environment but one of the main titles was without women you cannot uh, do anything uh, or have any sustainable project, economic, environmental, or anything else first. Then there has been the uh, other uh, world summit, the Copenhagen summit, and the Beijing summit were sp especially for women. And of course- And Lebanon I was involved in those. Very much so, and women of Lebanon. Now, um, it's difficult to talk uh, how much and how long, but even when I joined parliament, many, many ladies came and told me, you did not join as a woman, but as a wife. I said, yes, of course, but at least I'm paving the way and people are getting used to see a woman in a place f uh, where many generations imagined that women could not be there and, and should not be there. Men have dominated politics. Yes. Speaking of the wife. I'm going to give a little introduction so that our audience knows, those who don't. Following the Taif Agreement to end the Lebanese Civil War, you became the first post-war First Lady when your husband, René Ma'awad, became President. However, 17 days later, René Ma'awad was assassinated. To Lebanon, and I quote, René Ma'awad was a perfect example of nonviolence. His culture of non-confrontation and his courage led all of the Lebanese parties to accept him as a president to end the war. After such an event, how do you find the courage to enter politics when you know that it can end in such violence, having lived it? Well, I didn't think too much. And René Mawad was assassinated for a cause. 
it was he was the person first of all of the national reconciliation mm -hmm. he was the man of united uh, uh, the united lebanon and above and above everything he wanted to build a strong insti state institutions so that this national reconciliation this unity of the lebanese should end up with strong state institutions to keep the citizens right and uh, he was very much hoping to and he maybe uh, maybe he could have he succeeded. inspired you for because he was the first man in lebanon who became president who spoke of unity and i think that's the message that you carried out through your foundation and through your time in politics not only has he inspired me because you're talking about the 17 days of presidency I've been married to René Mawad ever since 65, and it was a, a credo in his life. It was uh, an everyday work and, uh, and uh, action and getting himself into dangers. And uh, uh, he used to tell me without unity, there is no Lebanon, and without state institutions, there is no nation. And that's true. So um, for me, I was uh, not only uh, inspired, but uh, I was convinced and I was in my way at that time, I was trying to support uh, uh, this uh, way of thinking and this way of life. And uh, of course, I found the courage, maybe I was, it was unconsciousness, but to me it was essential. I had a passion, I wanted to, to uh, fulfill the mission or try to contribute to the to fulfill fulfilling the the cause uh, that he had been giving his life for what is the most important thing for women in Lebanon in your opinion to have or the advice to know well I hate giving advices to okay. women <laughs> and uh, to, to anyone Speaking but I can experience. tell about my own uh, experience yes of course I went to Parliament like as a wife, but I think that my political uh, career and my 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 thread, uh, my way of from the very dramatic day of the 22nd of November 89, where my husband was assassinated, till now, I think also I've been Naila Mawad because I, it was a cause, it was a passion, and um, ever since I was in Parliament, I wanted to give also a social dimension to politics, and I wanted to give an honest dimension to politics, and to prove that you can be a good politician when you study your files, when you uh, keep on um, having your own political culture, but also you can be sincere and you can be honest. And by the way, I'm very proud to say that after three years in, my, in the ministry, the minister who came after me tried a lot to find any, any corruption or any nepotism or any legal uh, uh, thing he could catch and he couldn't find, and this is not because I am the one, yes, I'm one, but I think on the whole, women in all over the world are more honest, more loyal, more passionate, and they work a lot because they have to prove themselves. Okay, and this is, this is you speaking about your experience in parliament as a minister, as yes. a first lady, and no, as a but woman. I also want to tell women something else. If we are not a pressure group, many things will never happen. If there are no political parties to educate women on politics, to, like, uh, as to educate men on politics, if there is not a preparation uh, for political life, it will be difficult for women uh, not to come either in a black suit like, like I came or um, or being related. So we need to put the pressure and come together as women. We need to put women. the pressure, to put the pressure as women and to put the pressure on democracy. Without democracy, there is no 
real women participation. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mrs. Mawat, and thank you for those words.